welcome back to my channel with me i have a video of a sister people are tagging or calling a two minutes rant because in it she talks about the most irritating aspect of what's happening to palestinian people and the genocide happening right now as the way the western media contextualizes israel and palestine now when it comes to israel they personify it in the sense that whenever talking about israel there's always need of connecting it to israel people the people of israel which means that if you are against israel then you are against its people while when it comes to talking about palestine people are using hamas as the sticking point which is a thing or organization now we have seen how biased the media has been when it comes to contextualizing the two but i'm not really going to go into details now because i want you my viewers to watch a sister's video for yourselves here's the video check it out i will be right back i think the most irritating aspect of what is happening to palestinian people and the side that is happening to them right now is the way that western media contextualizes israel and Palestine. When it comes to Israel, Israel gets to be humanized. The state of Israel and their government gets to be personified, right? Whenever people are usually talking about Israel in the Western media, they always connect it to Jewish people, which ends up bringing up anti-Semitism and attack on Jewish people, right? And it is so much easier for people to relate to other humans and other people rather than relating to a state or a government. So by relating and connecting Israel to its people, it makes it seem like if you are against Israel, you are against its people. Now look at the way that Palestine is contextualized in Western media. When people are conflating Palestine, they're using Hamas as the sticking point. I want someone quickly to describe to me what a member of Hamas looks like. That's right, you can't, because we don't know. Hamas is a thing. In terms of a noun, a person, place, or thing, it's a thing. It's an organization. It is something that we can attack because we don't know what it looks like, right? Even in a positive note, when people are like, we need to send humanitarian aid, they want to send it to where? To Gaza. They don't want to send it to the Palestinian people. Who knows what's going to happen to that aid when it reaches Gaza, we don't know if it's going to even reach the people. Why? Because we have not personified Palestine. We've attached it to a place, we've attached it to a thing, but we have not attached it to people. And that is why you see so much of Western media, especially with the US funding Israel in the way that it is, that's why you see so much attention in Western media being to Jewish people and the Israeli people that live in Israel because they've been personified. We have not given human aspects to the people of Palestine and the people of Gaza. Like many of you, I became aware of the Palestinian and Israeli relations or lack thereof really starting around October 7th, especially around October 7th, because after Hamas attacked Israel, a lot of pro-Israel people and Israelis were saying that this was Israel's version of 9-11. And I always thought it was interesting that Israel picked 9-11 right, as their similarity marker, right? And if you know anything about the US when it comes to propaganda specifically around 9-11, a lot of the propaganda starts on 9-11 and moves forward, right? You look at a lot of the things that came post 9-11 with the Patriot Act, TSA being created, the hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians in Libya, Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan that were murdered in the name of trying to defeat Al Qaeda, all of that. But you never really hear what happened before 9-11, what led up to 9-11, right? So I did some digging and I went to a simple Google search of 9-11 attacks and I went on Wikipedia and I scrolled through and I saw a list of motives that Al Qaeda, the terrorist organization that claimed responsibility for the 9-11 attacks, I saw a list of motives that they had. And you wanna know what the first motive was? The US support of Israel. And I thought that's too much of a coincidence. That's too much of, co of a coincidence. So I looked up Osama bin Laden, who was the leader of Al Qaeda. And Osama bin Laden had released a lot of statements and epithets and all this kind of stuff leading up to 9-11. And PBS did this amazing article where they synthesized all that information into a timeline. And in March of 1997, Osama bin Laden went on CNN 
Western media and said this, quote, we declare jihad against the U.S. government because the U.S. government is unjust, criminal, and tyrannical. It has committed acts that are extremely unjust, hideous, and criminal, whether directly or through its support of the Israeli occupation. The fact that the U.S. supported Israel was enough of a motive for al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden to attack the United States on 9-11. And right now, Israel is using 9-11 as a way to say, look what America did after 9-11. We have every right to do that to innocent Palestinian people. You cannot make this up even if you tried. I think she's really spot on on this one because the deliberate refusal to say Palestine also adds to its erasure as a legitimate state or people. I saw a tweet post saying that the only time the media refers to Palestinians as people is when they refer to them as human shields. And I just can't get that out of my mind. Let's check out a few stitches and hear what people had to say about a sister's video. When I get back, we talk more about this and I share my two cents on this matter. Here are the stitches. I will be right back forward right she's right a lot of the propaganda does start at 9 11 and moves forward and what i have never been able to figure out is why no one talks about the 1993 attack on the world trade center and the reason why i think about that so often is because it's a memory burned in my head I always knew since I was a very small child exactly where my mother worked and on that day I will never forget I was in elementary school and a teacher came running in talking about how there was an attack at the World Trade Center. If you don't believe me you can read about it yourself because it's still on the FBI's website. I've never been able to understand how it happened twice and how we were unprepared twice. To provide a little context one of the main reasons why my mom was okay then and was okay during 9-11 was because <clears throat> the day of the 93 attack, she received a call from my grandfather, may he rest in peace, and he was watching what happened on the news, called her on her landline at work, because it's before cell phones, and was like, get out of the building right now security was saying nothing no one who worked for her company knew what was happening or that anything even happened thankfully everyone was able to get out and then when 9-11 happened less than a decade later the security for her company already knew what time it was and they were not waiting for what anybody else had to say but my question is if you really sit and think about it if everyone from or at least we were told if everyone who was involved in the 93 attack was caught then to that creator's point how are we so either unsure of the motives and the extent that those that people might go based on those motives that that would even be able to happen less than a decade later. Other humans and other people. Yes, 100%, go watch that. Because it reminds me of this quote by Israel Zongwil who said, Palestine is a country without a people. The Jews are a people without a country, which has since been watered down. It's simplified, less wordy to accommodate the Zionist movement as a land without a people for a people without a land. So it does play into the sympathy aspect that Jews have been executed throughout history. And it erases the humanity of the Palestinian people by denying their existence there at all, let alone their indigeneity to the land. And Western powers became Zionists because they said, hey, actually, we don't want Jews in Europe either. So if you get out of here, we'll give you a charter to wherever. Look at the Madagascar project. Look at the Uganda project. It's been heavily discussed that being anti-Zionist does not make you anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic. But what's overlooked is that there are lots of Zionist powers throughout history that are anti-Semitic because they didn't want Jewish people there. They said, okay, you want your own state? Great, because we don't want you here. And all of this framework and verbiage is highly intentional to humanize what's happening. That is what settler colonialism does. Just like during assimilation projects here in America where they would send indigenous people to boarding schools or try to force people into an agrarian lifestyle. The whole framework was till the Indian and save the man. And it shouldn't take fighting, kicking, screaming for one human to recognize another as a fellow human being. But here we are, and it does, and that's by design. So, free Palestine. And moves forward, right? 
this is very good because I'm taking social deviance and the professor asked us to compare how Muslim Americans were treated after 9-11 and how the, how were white people treated after the Oklahoma City bombing if you don't know the Oklahoma, Oklahoma City bombing um, in 1995 is one of the largest act of homegrown terrorism in the history of the United States and it was uh, committed by uh, I think three veterans um but this is exactly what i wrote the, the the dynamic did not change among white people it's strictly because of how they look there has been an, an inability to acknowledge themselves as a threat it is not an intelligent failure it is a failure upon available intelligence no one acknowledged that american can do that to themselves and our democracy additionally the ideology that inspired mike Vey, which is the one that committed it has spread in large part by social media. The 9-11 terrorism attack by Al-Qaeda 20 years ago united a wave of anti-Muslim sentiment. Muslim Americans still face Islamophobia. It was a day that changed the way they are seen by people in America. Muslim and Arab are seen as a threat or terrorist, even if those things do not correlate. People associate people that look Arab with something that they did not create. Critical race theory and faces the systematic racism underlying the, the, the sorry, underlying this treatment. So since I, since 9-11, Muslim and Arabs have faced a collective punishment because of how they look. While after the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, specific individuals were punished with, were punished. So with peacemaking criminology su suggesting a lack of systemic racism. Critical race theory, however, emphasizes the disparate treatment and racialization of crime in this case. On 9-11 and moves forward. Now publishing unsubstantiated claims telling only one side of the story and painting Palestinians as nothing more than objects in Hamas's hands and uh, all professional uh, mistakes Western media makes while covering the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Now, the systemic bias in favor of Israel is irreparably damaging the credibility of news agencies considered mainstream in the eyes of Arabs and others. As Western media organizations dehumanize Palestinians and legitimize Israeli violations of international law. As Israel bees Gaza, it is obvious that the vital historical context of trauma Palestinians have been through for the past 75 years is being left out. On October 7, Hamas launched an unprecedented attack on military outposts and communities in southern Israel, unaliving more than 1,400 Israelis and taking more than 200 hostages back to Gaza, according to Israeli officials. Now, the same day, Israel launched a relentless bee of Gaza that has unalived more than 8,000 people, about 40% of whom are children. It also devastated Gaza's health sector and flattened much of its infrastructure while strengthening its choke called siege by cutting off fuel water and food acts that may amount to war crimes under international humanitarian law united nations experts say palestinians in gaza are facing the risk of genocide. western correspondents have gone to israel where they reported extensively on the grief of israeli families but israel has not allowed foreign journalists to enter gaza which means they are missing a vital aspect of the story now if you don't live in gaza if you don't listen to the prayers palestinians make when they lose loved ones if you don't learn about the life story of loved ones who have been unalived then the coverage of gaza won't be the same as the coverage of israel this means that they are not just covering the Israeli narrative, but they are leaving the Israeli narrative. Now, most of the people within Gaza are the children or grandchildren of Palestinians who were expelled from their homeland during the creation of Israel in 1948. An event commemorated annually as the Nakba or catastrophe. Rights groups refer to Gaza where 2.3 million people are squeezed into a piece of land only 41 kilometers, 25 miles long and 10 kilometers six miles wide as the largest open air prison in the world you don't hear the word terms in reference to palestinians as you hear when there is 
reporting about the Israeli side. Rather than cover the human tour in Gaza, many Western media networks either refer to the Palestinians unalived as numbers or echo American and Israeli talking points including Israel's right to defend itself and Hamas using civilians in Gaza and human shields. Now according to international law, Israel is an occupying force in the West Bank and Gaza. For decades it has built and expanded illegal set settlements in the former. Now it has maintained a suffocating siege on the latter since 2007. Amnesty International has pointed to what it terms uh, damning evidence of war crimes as Israeli attacks unalive entire families in Gaza. Satellite imagery shows how neighborhoods in Gaza that have been flattened, these double standards reflect a broader tendency of Western media organizations to portray Muslims and Arabs as less than human. What we are seeing right now is a repeat Arabs and Muslims were painted with this terrorist brush and vilified. Palestinians invited to speak to Western news channels are frequently asked if they condemn Hamas while Israeli guests are seldom asked to condemn their government's outside policies in the occupied West Bank or its siege and be of Gaza. In every Western news report, they keep mentioning that Hamas is a terrorist group. But what about mentioning what Israel is doing? It's violating international law. It's committing genocide. It has imposed an apartheid system in the West Bank. It has imposed a 16-year blockade on Gaza. Where is the context? Only that Hamas is terrorist group and that, that is the only context they are giving us here unsubstantiated claims made by israeli parties have made their way to the front pages of western news agencies despite the lack of evidence the allegations were reported by the independent cnn fox news and the new york post now when western outlets focus on these claims of 40 babies and women being raped then what they're effectively doing is justifying the brutality of israel's uh, counter attack how else do you sell the idea of self defense when israel is being what is basically a concentration camp while some journalists as western uh, outlets may want to do more through reporting many actually fear losing their livelihoods and careers if they speak out against their networks pro-israel bias a non-Jewish Arab journalist was instructed by their news outlet not to attend any demonstrations or post anything on social media that suggests he empathizes with Palestinians. We're not just witnessing a breakdown in humanity, we are witnessing a breakdown in the profession. Kindly share your own take on this and thanks for watching. See you in my next video.